Now, we're well and truly into winter and we certainly experienced its chilly might last weekend. Well, figures have shown that almost 44,000 excess or what they call winter deaths were caused in 2014, which is the highest since 1999. And most of those people were over 75. So how can we help elderly friends and family to stay warm and well this winter while remaining independent in their own homes? With us from Home Call, we're joined by James Hudson. Morning to you, James. Good morning, Julie. Nice to see you. And you. Filled with Coco Pops. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> testing, testing. I know, I know. This is what we do, everyone. Well, it, it beats uh, Bob and Biscuits, which is something we've had along the lines <laughs> before. Now, for anybody, I mean, people will have seen Coast and Country because you're from that organisation as a sort of an umbrella figure, yeah, aren't you? Yeah. And uh, I was mentioning earlier, I know you get about a bit because wherever I drive, <laughs> you're either in front of me, behind me or beside me. <laughs> So you get about. Now, home call, where does that fit in to the bigger picture? Yeah, so underneath the coast and country, um, providing housing, social housing within Redcott and Cleveland and beyond, um, the home call service delivers a, an independent service for previously just our tenants, um, but now anybody across the Tees Valley area, and it's to, to keep them independent at home for a little bit longer. So we sit within coast and country, but it's not just for our tenants. Ah, well, that's a good idea. So what is it you actually do that allows people to have that independence? What are they missing that you fill the gap of? If you imagine um, somebody being discharged from hospital or somebody just getting a little bit older uh, and starting to think about what would happen if I had a fall or what would happen if I couldn't get out of bed? Who would come and see me? When would they come and see me? Um, So what we try to do, or what the service allows us to do, is to to provide that level of independence through a a home call monitor, home call response service. So there's three levels to the service. Um, We have a 24-7 contact centre, and what will happen is, if we come out there, provide you with a little bit of equipment, be a, a pendant around the neck or around your wrist, you press that, it comes through to us, and we say, is everything okay? There's obviously an issue. Um... Who should we call? You know, it might be a, a, a friends and family or a neighbour and things like that. The second level of the service is where we've got a number of independent living advisors, which is kind of posh for warden, who will come out if there's an emergency, come and see to your needs there and then. And then there's the telecare service. So the telecare service is um, sensors that you would wear on your person or placed around the home. So if you had a fall and you're wearing a falls detector, um, we would be automatically notified and then we would activate the response. That's really clever, that. How, how, does, how does it sense that somebody's actually fallen over? They're very, uh, they're very precise, so it's tailored to um, if you have a fall, uh, if you just dropped it, for example, it wouldn't pick that up because it, the sensor knows that it's just been dropped. Ah. Whereas if the weight is behind it of somebody having a fall, it detects that and comes straight through to us. Really clever. Yeah. Now, as you mentioned, this is this is a wider thing now. It's not just for people who are uh, from coast and country as, no, as right. residents. So how do you manage to, to let everybody know that that's what you do and that service is there for them? Well, what we try and do is obviously through our uh, tenants and, and under the coast and country umbrella, we... Uh, a lot of our referrals come through people's friends and families, so they'll hear about the service through Mrs. Moggins along the road or <laughs> Mrs. Jones has got it, and then um, they will say, oh, I quite fancy that, or oh, I need that, or my family's been worried about me being on my own since such and such passed away or whatever, um, and then we will go out and do it like that. So friends and family are, are great for us, but we also partner with um, a lot of the NHS teams that are, that run in the region um, and they will make referrals directly into us so they might have somebody in hospital who is due for discharge and they need a level of independence at home in order for them to be able to go out and live live back in their own home and what it does is um, we try to to marry up that gap between people staying at home and having to go into residential care or having to go into have additional personal care at home and things like that so a lot of people want to stay in their own home as they get older. They don't want to move into residential care, and we try and facilitate that. No, well, exactly. I mean, I would. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm very much a home bod, yeah. as it were. I like my own home. So the idea of having to ship out just because I was getting a bit older, maybe a little frailer, mm-hmm. I suppose that that's quite a, a scary possibility, really. A, a huge amount of people that we go and we do... Um, I go to a, a, a lot of meetings and, and the rest of the home call staff do as well to promote the service. And you'd be surprised at the amount of people that turn around and say, oh, 
I quite fancy this for me mum or for me dad. And, yeah. and we end up getting a lot of people uh, coming onto the service because the people who we're in meetings with want the service for them. So is this a costly thing? I mean, for an example, if I wanted this for my mother or my father mm-hmm. or what have you, does it is it a costly thing to, to do and partake in? So I previously mentioned the three levels of the service. Uh, the home call monitor, which is the friends and family type of, of uh, scenario where a friend or family member or neighbour would come and see to you if there was an incident, uh, is £3.70 a week. And then the, the home call response where we would go out and respond for you is £4.95 a week. And for less than a fiver, that reassurance and independence and support that we can provide is, uh, is, is gold for, for some family members who, who may not live within the region anymore and who are worried about parents living alone or, or living by themselves, whether they're getting out, isolation and, and all those types of issues. What if you were somebody who, for an example, you had your own home, mm-hmm. um, but over the course of the, you know, of your lifetime, you, you're maybe now dependent on benefits, and so you haven't got that sort of extra cash yeah. to, to pay that. How can they get help? So we do uh, partner with Red Corn Cleveland Council, um, and through their telecare service that they provide, um, through social work assessment, you can qualify for home call um, telecare as well, and, and that is within personal budgets and done through the social work uh, assessment. So there is support there? Yes, there is. If needs be. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, one of the things that we mentioned there was about um, the amount of deaths, extra deaths, winter deaths at this time of year. Um, What sort of support is there to help older people through the winter time? So we do things like keeping warm at winter, provide a lot of advice to to elderly people who are starting to worry about, oh, winter's coming, I need to, dark nights are rolling in, what security do I have around? So we have a full advice service as well, um, and you can contact us through the telephone number, and and our office staff are are great, they've been doing this for for 13 years, I think, since 2002, when Coast and Country was was created. Um, So we've got a wealth of experience that we're we're looking to pass on uh, as well. It's, it's always good to know that there is that help there. Now, we'll take a break for just a, a song. And uh, us this morning from Home Call is James Hudson. Now, James, I was quite intrigued by um, a press release that you sent through just under the title J'adore Home Call. <laughs> and what was nice about this is it's actually what you do in action. So tell us about this, about uh, about Mrs. Joyce Kane. Well, this was a fantastic uh, compliment that comes through. As you can imagine, once somebody's been through an emergency um, and, and our service has gone out there and it, it's worked really well for the family uh, and from the, for the uh, service user, we get compliments. And we, we, they flood through and um, I sift through them and I got, got this one. And Joyce's daughter lives in the south of France. So Hence the J'adore. Hence the J'adore, yes. Um, and she had contacted us and said, look, I live in the south of France, mum lives in Saltburn, if you hadn't have gone, if she hadn't had the home call service, she might still be on the floor now. Crikey. Um, and it's not like Joyce is totally isolated, it's not like the, she's not on the moon sitting So on. what had happened there? What had happened there in, in, in like a practical sense? What was the story? So Joyce had had a fall in her home, uh, pressed her home call pendant. It had come through to our 24-7 contact centre. Because there's no family and uh, friends living nearby, obviously her, her daughter's in the south, south of, of France, France. Pretty, uh, pretty big journey to get to her rescue, um, she's on the response service. So our independent living advisors went out there, picked Joyce up off the floor using the equipment that we've got, sat her down in our own home, give her a cup of tea, cup of coffee. Are you OK, Joyce? Yes, I'm fine. Or, no, I want to go to hospital. Luckily, she was fine. Um, and she was in our own home and, and happy. So that meant there wasn't a draw on the ambulance service. They didn't get called. She didn't have to go to James Cook, so there was in a hospital admission there. And this is how the home call service connects into those higher levels of emergency services, I guess. Oh, bless her, 92 as well. I mean, how long had she been lying there? Um, our average response time is 14 and a half minutes. 14 and a half minutes? Yeah. Wow. There must be a lot of organisations wish they could hit that sort of target. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes, we we work very hard at those statistics. And based in Redcon Cleveland, it means that we can get to uh, Easington. We go all the way over to Stokesley and Yarm, some north of the Tees as well. Um, and it, we're quite reassured in the fact that, that we do meet those targets and we're monitored by our our industry standards and things like that, which we just got our accreditation for the ninth consecutive year in October. Now, home care 
is uh, sorry home call is what you do under the banner of um coast and country but which again is a, a social housing so how do you actually fund this because this is quite a high standard of of service that you're offering yes it is um before 2012 the home call service was only for coast and country tenants that's because a lot of it was funded through central government and, and local government. But in 2012, supporting people funding in Red Car and Cleveland got cut by 100%, which was about 85% of the home call income. So we had to make a decision. Do we forsake this service within coast and country, knowing that there's going to be a lot of elderly and vulnerable people who need it um, but aren't going to be able to access it? Or do we make a model where we can go out to the private sector as well? So that's how we, we make the home call service work now. Rather than just for coast and country tenants, it's across the board and we've got over 5,000 customers now. Now, what I'd be interested to know, because there is uh, Mrs. Joyce Kane, who we've just mentioned. Mm-hmm. Her daughter, living in the south of France, actually knew about the service in order to be able to, to say, actually, can you sort my mother out with this? But not everybody has a daughter or a son who lives close by who will know about you, but are living in a vulnerable way how do you engage with them how do you let them know that you're available so what a lot of those people will do is they'll visit the gp services a lot or they will have a social worker that they need to to communicate with we work very closely with the social work team at Raycon cleveland council um and i personally have been all the 44 gp surgeries in Raycon and cleveland <laughs> you? oh they love you <laughs> and put out the home call posters and information and it's trying to connect in them like that and then we try and engage the gp practices to say you can recommend into home call and what that's going to do is that's going to take a strain off repeat visits to the gps which of course is something that the nhs are looking at because i would imagine there are people as they get older they don't really want to admit that they are older that they are vulnerable that they need that help so how do you convince them that well actually just having this can really make a difference well for those people we do it through their families a lot because what we'll say is yes you might be fine but your son or daughter or granddaughter or grandchildren um they're not having the best of times in it. They're worried that they're going to come in and you're going to be lying on the floor or you're going to be stuck in the bath or stuck in the toilet or the the chip pan's going to be on. Um, and so the, that's where the telecare stuff comes into it as well. So it's an automatic sensor. Oh, telecare, what's that? That's where the, the sensors... Uh, oh, the sensor, right. Yeah. Uh, I thought this was something that it, in the telly. <laughs> I thought you were going to say this was... And I was thinking, what? The telly can watch you and find out if you've fallen? That would be, that'd be really clever. Well, there clever. is advances in technologies, Julie, so we will be there soon probably. But we have to tailor it to what people want. At the minute, people don't want to, to tune in through the television, but that that equipment is available. We can't provide it if people want it. Excellent. Excellent. Can you, can you do cameras or anything of that sort of nature? We do, but at the moment, we, we it's not drawing a line. It's it's meeting demand. So a lot of people don't want to have a big brother is watching you. So, for example, a lot of dementia patients have a property exit sensor, which we install. And what that means is that the front door shouldn't open after 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock at night, for example. And if it does, it automatically notifies us and we can tell the the family member that the front door's open or we can go and do a response we could do that through gps um and monitor where that person is wow but a lot of people are um they don't want that big brother element to it they'd rather just know that the front door's gone has opened it's not supposed to be right we're going to send a family member or a home call responder and we can catch them a lot of the time you must get some nice response back f- generally from from parents though do you well not just that we had a fantastic one the other day um there, there was a guy who lives in middlesbrough and he'd been out on his christmas party um and he seen one of the home call responders wandering around um obviously looking for somebody so he pulled over he said is everything okay and the the home call responder said yes uh, i'm just looking for a gentleman I, I, i've got him here taking him back into his his property because he's his property exit sensor went off and this guy contacted us through our Facebook page and he said, look, the service you do is absolutely fantastic. It was 12 o'clock. It was bitly cold. This guy would have been wandering around till God knows what time mm. in the morning. He would have been one of those news stories, you know, have you seen such and such? Um, but because he had a property exit sensor and because we were able to go um, and find him and get him back into his, his warm bed, um, this guy is, has been fantastic. He's a, he's a huge advocate of ours. Absolutely. And having advocates is really, really important. Now, if somebody was listening right now and thought, actually, my parent, my friend, my neighbour could probably do with a bit of help, what do they do? Um, the easiest thing is to 
to ring us. Um, we've got a, a phone number there, 01642771339. Um, and we've got an office team there who are, are capable of giving you all the information that you need. We can set up a, a no obligation, a no no holds barred um, meeting with one of our independent living advisors where we'll come out to the home. We recommend that family members are there as well um, and just talk you through the, the different levels of the service. You don't have to sign up there and then we can go away, think about it. You, It might not be for you at that time, but it's something that obviously you know about. We also have the, the email, uh, which is in inquiries at homecall.me and then all of our information is on our website, which is www homecall.me marvellous uh, James is handing me the leaflet into my hands so <laughs> I can certainly make sure that I get that information out across uh, was there anything else that you'd like to make mention to before we let you go no just thank you very much Julie we've been uh, avid listeners since you started uh, it's tuned into all the home call vehicles and uh, Ooh. we we particularly enjoy the, the 10 o'clock slot <laughs> Bless you. James Hudson from Home Call, thank you very much for coming Thanks, in. Thanks, Julie. Bye.